Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. In CSSP, a couple of things which we have to actually understand, I mean, what exactly the content we have and, uh, and uh, how exactly we are going to approach uh, the topics which is we have in the syllabus, right? Yeah. So let's understand the same thing. Let me just to start my syllabus part. Okay. So hope you hope my screen is visible for you, right? Oh yes, we are looking at domain one security and this. Yeah. So uh, let me in CISSP certification, the total of so uh, there are total of eight different domains we have, right? And uh, each of the domains is basically discussing about a specific part of the security, right? right? So when it comes to information security, there are total of eight domains we have here. Yeah. So eight domain is basically the eight different area, right? So like one of the area is the network and another one, another one is the software, right? So like that, uh, the different, different area of the security. So in this eight domain, what exactly we have? So we have different, uh, you know, concepts explained there like security and risk management, uh, asset security, then we have security, architect and engineering. So the so what exactly ISIS got things is basically the security compromise can happen from any of the area. Right. Okay, whether you are managing uh, the software, whether you're managing the network infrastructure, right, or the physical infrastructure, right, or you're managing mm -hmm. a certain techniques or the technology there. So yeah. In IC squad CISSP specifically, we are actually going to discuss all the area which can create a problem for the organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason it is basically divided into eight different domain, right? The first domain we have is the security and risk management. And like that, we have seven more domain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, definitely in each domain, I mean, there are lots of information we have, right? And we don't need to need, uh, we don't need to know all the informations there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what our going to focus is uh, from the examination point of view specifically, how do we approach and what topics is basically going to be very much important <clears throat> because one of the impo most important thing, there are lots of information we have in the CSSP. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if I'm going to, uh, so let's suppose I'm a participant and I'm actually trying to digest everything and I have to also appear in the examination within a month or might be within two months. So it is not possible for me to complete everything, right? The the yeah. point is that the book which is available for the CSSP, that is also just a reference material. A reference yeah. means just you can take a reference that what kind of topic which you have to read. Don't mm -hmm. think that exactly same topic is going to part of your examination. But, but yes, how exactly you need to think that one, at least you will be getting the information. And accordingly, only we have to prepare. So we don't need to know the technology in a very depth level. It's not needed. So if I'm discussing about the firewalls, if I'm discussing about the IPS, no need to understand those devices or solutions in very, very much depth. But yes, oh, yeah. you should be clear on that, that at what moment of time we require those solutions to be implemented in our organization. Okay, how to configure that, that doesn't uh, actually require here. Okay, but oh, yeah. why yeah. that solution is required, what kind of problem that solution is actually going to uh, tackle, that one you should know because in your examination, typically you're built, you will be getting a scenario based question. And that scenario expecting that you should have information about the control and accordingly you can actually give the certain information as per the scenario given there. Okay. okay? Yes. That is the overall thing we have. So we will discuss about those eight domains here. And the first domain, definitely I'm going to start with a domain one, uh, security and risk management. Yes. Now. Uh, there are two phase uh, for the CSSP examination. The first phase is basically you need to pass the examination, right? right? So you have to first ensure that you are able to pass the examination. So passing the examination, the first stage of the of, uh, stage of obtaining the certification. Second stage is basically you have to uh, prove or you have to get endorsed for <clears> the experience <throat> what you have. Okay. Yeah. So you have to actually prove that you have the necessary five year of experience in any two of the domain listed in the CSSP. How do I, how do I, uh, how I do mean, I prove you must have worked in some organization. You must having a certain work profile there. 
Yeah, so yeah. you need to actually just tell that I had worked as a, let's suppose, as a software developer in this organization from this period to this period, right? Yeah. And that's it. So you have to actually upload your uh, resume, uh, which we, you must have already created uh, yes. or you must already having, or you just need to upload it. And then yeah. uh, you have to provide uh, that from which domain area you wanted to uh, claim that experience. And uh, you also have to provide your reporting manager's mail ID, which okay. might be utilized for the further validation. Okay. So, yeah. So, these are the two phases we have. For first, you have to pass the examination, then get endorsed for your certification. And after completing that, you will be able to get the professional certification, the CISSP. Got you. Okay. Yeah. Now, remember when you're done with the examination, when you have to obtain the certification, this certification is valid for next three years. Oh, okay. Okay. It means if you if you wanted to maintain the certification for the next three year more, in such case, you have to fulfill two conditions. First condition is that you should pay the annual maintenance fee. Okay. And per year, you have to pay $125 maintenance fee. Okay. So total, it is going to be $375 for total of three years. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then you have to obtain the necessary CP that is called that is for the continuation of professional educational points. Okay. Me they, should I be training something else or what? Correct. Is? You have to okay. actually take some training to upgrade yourself. Right. Okay. And that one will provide you and that will provide might you some CP points there. Let's suppose you are taking the 40 hour of training. So yeah. that is uh, that is basically for 40 CP you will get there. Okay. Yeah. Similarly, you have to obtain total of 120 CP for this three year of cycle. Oh, okay. So if you, so if you fulfill both of the conditions, it mm. means your certification will be again going to be renewed for the next three year. Understood. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So these are the requirements we have. So first pass the examination, then you can maintain your certification further. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. So uh, let's start then. Uh, so uh, so this is the first domain, right? So in the first domain, what we have to understand, let's see. See, for this first domain is basically talking about the information security basics agenda, first of all. And definitely for this particular agenda, what are the different sort of uh, controls or might be the issues which we are actually facing? Right. See, this domain is basically talking about the security concepts, which from where we actually need to start with. Okay. Right. And definitely, accordingly, we are going to check it out. What sort of control? What sort of uh, issues we are facing? And then, what sort of uh, you know uh, technology or might be the approach we have to actually follow when we are actually implementing any sort of control in the organization? Right. So let's discuss the same thing. So security and risk management is the first domain. Now within this domain, uh, we will be discussing about the information security principles. And then we will be discussing also about the business continuity planning. There are some laws and regulations also we have around us, which is actually talking about the privacy and the data security. Yeah. So we'll try to also understand, but again, the data privacy will not cover as part of this uh, domain, but. Whenever it is needed, we are going to discuss about that, that laws and regulations. Otherwise, yeah. it is going to be a kind of boring chapter. Okay. Yes. So uh, what what exactly we need to understand about from the security? So before I <clears throat> proceed, so this is the agenda we have. So domain one agenda, security and risk management, we are going to discuss about. So if you can see here, we are first going to start with the discussion of the need of security. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll discuss about the assessment, management, response, and then program development as well, which can actually help us to improve the security controls. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before I move forward, a few questions for you. Just, just check if you're able to solve it. It's not considered in the trade country. LG. Uh, C is not an option. First question. Can C. Use the word? Authenticity yeah. you're saying now. Okay. Yeah. So it's the CIA triad, right? Right, right. Is availability, uh, not right. authenticity. Um, when you use, uh, can I read it loud? If you're okay, or yeah, yeah, sure, please go. When you use the word, it means you're protecting your data from getting disclosed. Confidentiality. 
Okay, yeah, go on. When integrity is lacking in your in a security system, integrity integrity is some kind of a fiddling is have data tampering. Yeah, that's a word. See, so the correct. Yeah, yeah. Great. So yeah, so I think you are aware about these security principles. So what we have here in this uh, uh, first domain for the discussion is what exactly the security is and why exactly we should be caring about the security. Right. See, when it comes to security, one of the most important thing which we are actually going to take a reference here is basically the information, the data which we actually need to protect, right? Yeah. So definitely we have lots of, uh, I mean, lot many different type of data. Yeah. And we will try to protect it as well, definitely. The point is from how exactly we should start with. You know, definitely, yeah. there are lots of control available. Okay, and those controls are also not very uh, you know, low cost option. right? So yeah. there is a huge money we have to actually pay for those particular controls. At the end of the day, if I'm not generating any value from implementing the control, so that is also not making sense for, a, the, for an organization to get it implemented. Great. Right. So before we select or implement any control, definitely we actually talk about lots of uh, different set of data which we actually need to collect. Which can actually help. We are talking uh, about assessment phase now, isn't it? So I, basing on my assessment, I found the I found the uh, uh, you know the vulnerability. A kind of yes. Okay, thank you. But right now, definitely you should know about the vulnerabilities. Yes, because. Vulnerabilities can actually help you to understand the overall impact as well. Right. Hmm. So definitely we need to do the impact analysis and based on that only we can actually understand yeah. whether any control is really required or whatever we have is okay. I mean, we don't need yeah. to do anything. Oh, yes. Right. <clears throat> impact actually will drive our action overall. Mm. Mm. So our central uh, point you can say is basically the information which we actually ne needed to protect. Yes. Okay. So it is the information which we want to protect. In in this case, I can say that this information is basically very crucial for my organization. The reason is I'm actually making lots of decisions based on this information. This information might be very crucial for my organization because if I if I fail to safeguard, mm -hmm. there's a, there is a huge impact on my organization, uh, not only on the reputation, but even from the monetary perspective. There is a huge impact possible because they may need to pay fine, a huge fine as well. But there will be fines. There will also be lawsuits in case if the data is breached or some some kind of a compromise happens. Right? Definitely, yeah. So that is again the kind of impact only which we are talking about. Definitely, huh? yes. Right. Huge is your reputation is gone for a toss. Gone. You are basically, yeah, you are losing. And then on on top of it, uh, the financial implications in terms of fines penalties and lawsuits correct so here i can say that this information is basically <clears throat> the asset for the organization right right yes right and we can actually define asset anything which is valuable for the organization that is that is falls under the asset right, right. now it could be anything it's not only about the information it could be anything it could be a human right it could be a person who is basically working in a certain uh, department if he is not available today there is a huge loss we are actually going to face yeah right there could be a particular site that could be a, could be a particular data center which is basically giving you lots of benefit there so that is one of the asset for you so this asset is basically anything which is valuable for the organization and when it comes to valuable definitely we need to ensure that we are providing necessary support so because we are actually talking about the assets right yeah and as I told, that asset could be anything, anything which is valuable for the organization. Yes. Right. Now, the point is, we need to provide protection, but protection from whom? Right. So even that information, we must have properly. Otherwise, we are just blindly, uh, blindly playing the game and definitely uh, the controls which we are implementing that doesn't provide any value to the organization. Correct. See, at the end of the day, if I'm implementing any control, I have to actually tell that, yes, this control is basically giving us a proper value. Right. Yes. So asset. So let's keep on the information here. So information is one of the type of asset which we are actually trying to manage. Right. The problem is that this information might be managed inside a system which might be vulnerable. 
okay mm, yes so there is a there could be a possibility that this information is directly exposed to the internet mm. okay or you are managing on a system which is directly exposed to the system, uh, internet yeah. or having some inherent vulnerability there right might mm. be the operating system itself is a vulnerable one and because of that anything which we are actually keeping on top of that is going to also vulnerable right the point is do we know what sort of vulnerability this particular information or the information management system on which you are managing this information mm. right yeah so vulnerability is basically the issues or mm -hmm. loopholes correct Weakness. which is related to information correct right yeah <clears throat> now so if there is any vulnerability available and let's assume there is a associated threat for that particular vulnerability as well Mm. right so what exactly threat so threat could be anything which is taking advantage of this vulnerability and then able to get control over this information right yeah so here the component which we have is called as a threat yeah right so as i told the threat is a threat is a component or any particular uh, object which is going to take benefit of the vulnerability and definitely will help us or help that particular uh, threat or that threat actor see generally this particular threat is going to created by some sort of person or process which is going right. to be beneficial because of this threat right right so right. can uh, we can say here that this particular threat is basically having a threat actor and someone mm -hmm. has generated this threat correct right. so that correct. particular yes. person or process is basically falls under the threat actor the threat correct. actor has generated a threat this threat can take advantage of this vulnerability <clears throat> right yes. and because of that definitely my information or the asset could be in danger that's right yes right <clears throat> so this is what the relationship between all of them now there is a term we are actually utilizing here which is going to combine this both of them vulnerability and threat that is called as risk right so risk is one of the most common term nowadays we are actually seeing in the information system so what That's is risk right. as per isaka so isaka is one of the governing body also you can say here right? yes so as per isaka risk is the possibility of a certain event and negative consequences because of that event Okay. Oh, does it mean the positive risk is not a risk in in Isaka's no, term? Is no, no, no. In okay. the information management system, or you can see in the IT right. infrastructure, we mm. don't calculate risk in positive manner. No, yeah, got you. Absolutely. But I, I know uh, you. If you are actually going through the PMP or other uh, mm. course materials, they actually treat risk as a positive entity as well. As well, because definitely. Yeah, because mm. definitely, if you can take risk, you may get some benefit as well, right? That's right. But yes. here we are actually just taking risk from the negative manner. I mean, in the information system, we always consider risk, you know, some sort of issue which is going to create a problem for the organization. Okay. Definitely so risk, a negative impact only. Yeah, we are correct. About. Correct. Correct. Yes. So here, risk is basically a certain event. This event could be like this threat. Like threat, yes. you can actually calculate. Like, take an example of a ransomware. Hmm. Right. So, ransomware hmm. is a form of malware. Correct. Okay. This ransomware, which is a threat. Okay. So, what I'm saying that risk is an event where a certain particular activity will be occurring, <laughs> and because of that, there is a negative consequences. So, let's assume this ransomware has taken the benefit of this vulnerability and because of yes. that your information got encrypted yes right? and because it got encrypted it actually impacted our availability part right so it yes. is now encrypted so definitely i'm not able to access it but it could be yeah. any kind of attack right yeah it could be any kind of attack which can possible yeah please yeah, please go on with the ransomware or you know he's basically capsizing or encrypting the information so it is only impacting the availability aspect of it we do not know whether the integrity is being tampered with is this a fair question uh, see uh, 
see whenever any information is getting compromised right so impact can be multiple so it's uh, here it's not basically only one single impact is right impact can be multiple now the point is here right now i'm not actually calculating that what sort of other impact can possible and we are okay. just trying to understand that yes. there's a the certain impact which is going to possible right yes. but definitely if a particular event is happening uh, one direct impact and might be because of that there are lots of indirect impact which is visible over the information right Absolutely. so that that is complete possible so yes uh, for particular information is compromised could be impact on the availability confidentiality even on the integrity as well okay here i'm just i'm i'm just assuming that an attack has actually happened which is a ransomware and because mm -hmm. of the ransomware this information which present on the system got encrypted correct okay and definitely yeah. it will give us a certain amount of impact there right yeah that risk is a certain event so here you can uh, assume that event is like the ransomware attack which might have happened over the system and now because yes. of that you now because my system is vulnerable for this uh why it might be there is no any patch available might be there is no any control available and because of that there is a chance that ransomware attack will be successful and because of that my information got encrypted which is definitely a kind of risk here. right <clears throat> so as a tool that in uh, risk is the possibility of a certain event and because of that whatever the negative consequences is event right. and the overall impact i can also say Very right true. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, sometimes we in the information management system environment, we also uh, define risk as the combination of vulnerability and threat. Okay, so this is also true. So if I need to define a com uh, equation for the risk, we can simply say vulnerability and threat into threat, isn't it? Threat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Combination of vulnerability and threat. Right. right. Now, because yes. definitely, if uh, if if any of the component is not present. then the possibility of the risk is basically going to be neglected right so let's suppose a my system is vulnerable okay yeah. but there is no any associated threat yeah correct correct so my system is still safe right because even yeah, if it is vulnerable true. there is nothing there which can actually exploit that vulnerability or you can say attack that vulnerability right so in such yeah. case my system is okay and so it right. is not at risk yeah. Yeah, I can go to an example. I know this. I understood what you said. Absolutely, yes. Correct. Yes. And uh, yeah, so in such case, the point is, if I needed to treat the risk, okay. Yeah. So when I say treatment, it means definitely I'm going to implement some sort of certain set of control there. So in order to treat the risk, we have to actually implement a certain control, hmm. okay. And that control yeah. will help us to improve the security of my organization. so either i'm going to treat this threat uh -huh. it means i'm going to implement some countermeasure which can help yeah. me tackle this issue threat okay yeah. or so as i told that uh, these are the combinations so now we know that what mm. exactly the i mean the threat risk is the risk is basically the combination of vulnerability, vulnerability. And, and and if i need to define the risk from the isaka perspective is the possibility of a certain event and negative consequences because of that event so this is the impact itself there thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today